Lord bless you folks. Do you feel the presence of the Lord? If you are not feeling the presence of the Lord, just reach out. He's there. You know what? If you were one of his sons and daughters, he came with you. He's within you. That's where he likes to dwell. And it's an added bonus when a group of people come together and collectively we worship him. Not from a head, as I often say, but from our heart. It's got to be real. I know there's people sometimes say, oh yes, I, I believe you, Lord, I believe you. But they're not. It hasn't actually happened down below. But you know, we've got to find our place with the Lord, not with my wife or with your husband or with your friends or with the church. It's you and God. And he's right there to bless you right now. I'd like to welcome the uh, faces. Some of them I don't know, some I do. Can't always remember the names. They come a bit thick and fast and uh, you don't always remember them. It was a bit like that last weekend when I wasn't here. I was in Naopi with my uh, young, youngest sisters. We're a family of nine. And my youngest sister had a home built there. She's from Australia and her husband. And she collected all my family, I thought, which it was true. And then we ended up with about 45 people or thereabouts. I didn't actually count them, but it was a really lovely family. Uh, family building time and it was uh, really good. You know, turn around and say, oh hi, how are you? Which one are you? Where are you from? Who's your parents? Not quite as bad as that but very close. I was working hard. And then they come up and say, who's that old man? I realised I was the eldest one there. <laughs> you know what, the Lord loves us all no matter with the old, young, what language, what colour, what anything. The Lord loves every one of them and he died for us and raised again knowing that we have the victory if we receive what he gave us. Shall we stand to our feet and sing God is so good? Number 517. Think about the words as we sing it and reach out for him because he's here. God singing it think yes the Lord did that to me he made me aware of that and he did that and I didn't even know that he had done it but in hindsight I knew that he had give all credit 
to our Lord Jesus good. God is so good. service and into our hearts and all you people on the internet and the CDs that are listening in at this time he loves you too Lord Jesus we are a grateful people unfortunately Lord many millions in this world do not even consider you and unfortunately Lord there's those that don't even know you but we pray for them whoever they are wherever they live and you know every single one of us is nothing that you do not know, Lord. You know where we come from, where we live, what our name is, what our past was, what our future is. And you've prepared it all for us, Lord, if we had only just come before you and say, thank you, Lord, for being here. Help us, Lord, to receive what you have for us this day. We don't come here blindly, Lord. We came because you required us to be here. It's a God-given decision, not ours. We just follow it, Lord. But we are listening. And we want you to stir in our heart this day. And thank you for being here, Lord. And bless the people that listen is in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Let's sing 158, Beyond the Sunset. Beyond the sunset, oh blissful morning, with thou Saviour, heaven is begun.
that better than anybody. But you know what really inspires me when you hear a nice tune of a hymn? I know that the person that wrote those words on all of those as we sing, and there's plenty of them, someone was inspired to write it. It was a God-given understanding that God did this for me. That God loves me and he wants to see me through and he will see me through. And we realize what he had gone through. And then I was really inspired by many times. It helps me to sing the hymns that have been written because thinking of those people. Okay, let's sing number 160. Time is filled with swift transition. We know that he's coming soon and we need to be ready to meet him. Time is filled with swift transition. you love man whatever it's real good just to hold a hand isn't it you know in the spiritual it's just the same 
you hold on to the Lord's hand, realizing that you're not walking alone. You've got God with you. And if you include him in your problems and in your bright times, your happy times, your sad times, whatever it might, include the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll find the power of God strengthen you in your walk. Okay, let's sing number 381. This world is not my home. I'm only passing through. You the same? Well, let's sing and rejoice in it. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the People don't agree with you. They think you're nuts. They don't understand. Not always their fault. You know, they could be your brothers and sisters in glory, but they just don't know it yet. You know, you only come to the Lord when he first calls you. You can only respond to that call in here. People have it up here a long time. For years they know, I got a church, I got a church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not saving you. Until the Lord comes and you feel something in the heart one day. Oh, I need to do something about it. Mm. I've got to walk the walk. But when you do, oh, the experience, you never do without it because he's coming to take you home. While Sister Pauline gets ready for the songs, you may be seated. And just let you know that we have uh, lunch here as usual, which we do every Sunday after this morning's service. We will be having lunch in the hall. Everybody is invited, encouraged to come and be with us and uh, have fellowship. It's not just eating. It's actually talking to one another and feeling what their life is like and you can express what is concerning to you. And uh, also that we don't have an afternoon service for the next couple of weeks because of the holiday time, holiday period. 
and the next uh, service we have will be next Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, as you've come here now. The prayer meetings are just uh, delayed at this time, just for that time. So anyway, we'll let you know every time when the next meeting is, and it will be 10 o'clock next Sunday. Thank you, Pauline.
know, if God gives us a uh, talents, all of us have a talent. Did you know that? You all have a talent, God-given. We don't often know what it is, but God uses it, and you included. We don't have any prayer requests on the internet uh, currently. There's just none there, but we may well have it here in the congregation. But I'm not asking for, as usual, but I am saying this. As we pray now for those that are in need, call out to the God. You know, when you have a problem, it's only between you and God, in actual fact. We don't have to know. And even those that we do know, we don't know the ultimate detail, intimate details, but the Lord does. So whoever has a need, and you folks out there on, on the internet and on the CDs, you're listening in, you hear it? You just give it to the Lord right now, and I'm going to ask the people in the congregation to raise the hand if they have a need before God. I don't need to hear it. We don't want to tell anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's the one that fixes the problem. Now, if you have a need for the Lord, raise your hand before him. He knows every detail and every need that you want. It may be the good things you want too that you've been asking for. Hold on to it. Pray to the Lord as we go here and wait for the answer. Let us pray. Bow our heads. Lord, you are our Lord. Lord Almighty God. You are the one and only God. There is no other gods made of stone and wood and what people think they worship all sorts of odd, crazy things. But there is only one God. Jesus Christ is your name. We know, Lord, that you are the one and only builder of everything. Like our world, like the universe, everything, Lord, you're the only one creator. No one else creates, only you. <coughs> Excuse me. Lord Jesus, there's people in the congregation that have indicated with a raised hand that they have a need or a request before you. I myself do. Lord, help us to believe that what we've prayed that we will receive. It's in your time, Lord, in your time. And you're with us and you will be with us. You have been with us. We're not here by chance. We're here because God ordered it. Thank you, Lord, for undertaking for our needs. Some of them can be for healing. Some can be for pain. Some can be for the family, people we want to meet, things that went wrong, things that you, we understood that we said something. We didn't mean that at all. You'd like to be able to fix it, but you can't. Lord, we give it to you anyway. We put it at the foot of the cross and you died for all of these things. And you rose again victorious as we will be when we believe what we've prayed. We know, Lord, that there's no point in us praying for the help from the Lord God if we don't believe you'll do it. We don't understand many things, Lord, but we do understand that you are almighty God, the one and only. Bless the people who listen in, Lord. Bless us here in the auditorium. Bless those that weren't able to be here because of holidays or whatever. They're not here. Bless them anyway. We ask these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Let us just have a uh, hymn now. Just search, remain seated. It's one that I like, and I don't sing it very often. And I'll have to ask the singers to help me here. 180, close to thee. Thou art my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me. Know about the words and relate to you as we sing this. Reach out to him from your heart. Thou
don't have to go to a church to find him. He's with you if you talk to him. I often tell people when they want to know, how do I contact God? I say, well, look, you're talking to me. Are you not? I'm not God. But that's how you do it. You just speak the way you want to speak. Doesn't matter what language you're speaking, the Lord understands. Doesn't matter what color you are, how old you are, he understands and knows. In fact, he knows what you're going to say before you even say it. That's our God. All he wants is for you to walk with him. And that's what we try to do, is to walk with God. He'll walk with us. While we remain seated, we'll have one more, then Brother Howard will come and bring the word to us. While we remain seated, shut in with God, number 76. Think about the words of this one. Shut in with God in a secret place. Then in the Spirit, beholding His face.
Praise the Lord. Who loves the Lord this morning? That's great. That's a good start. I love him too. And uh, I really enjoyed that song Sister Pauline sang uh, about going home to the Father and home. Does anybody know who it was singing about? Correct. Prodigal son. Beautiful story, the prodigal son. The highlight of the prodigal son was being in the pig pen. Not with the riches, not with the jewellery, not with all the friends and parties. His highlight, brother Peter, was in the pig pen. Why? Because he came to himself. <laughs> He woke up, the lights came on. I've got to go home. I've got to go back home to my father and home. When you get a realisation, you'll never be happy until you go back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go home to him where you belong. If you belong to God, you'll never be happy until you arrive home. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't the Lord good? We appreciate him for his love. We appreciate that song, brother. Sister Paul, you've got to sing that again. I'll learn to play it. Truly, I will. Um, it's just such a, a beautiful message. I just love to talk about the Lord. Because he is life to us. And we just welcome you all here this morning and appreciate you coming. And we pray that God's Holy Spirit will come down upon us. What makes a service is not the preacher, not the people, not the music, all those things are okay. But what really makes a service is when the Holy Spirit comes into the meeting. And he touches you. And you know, hey, God is here. I know he's touching my heart. Here come some more people. Praise the Lord. Do you know, <laughs> they're still in their car leaves. So they'll get here. But you know what? i just say this again about... Three, three or four months ago I had a dream and I was standing right here in the dream and the church was full and it was full of a lot of people I didn't even know and I believe God, when he does something he just does it so we just praise God we want to be a part of what God's doing not what we're doing we don't have an agenda we don't have a plan we just want to walk in the spirit and be led by God so I pray that God will speak to us today. <clears throat> I wonder if we could stand for the reading of God's word from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Exodus, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. So God set the calendar right there. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their families, fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbour next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your, your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. Who's seen the Ten Commandments? Film, the video, uh, video, <laughs> movie, the Ten Commandments. You saw them putting the blood on the door post and lintel? That was life to that household. Without it, the firstborn died. Now, this is very important for us today. I want you to listen carefully. And 
You shall strike on the two side posts and the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night and roast with fire the unleavened bread and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not it raw, nor sodden it at all with water, but roast with fire. His head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth it of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through e the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, against all the gods of Egypt. Will I execute judgment? I am the Lord. He is the Lord, brother and sister. And he's still the Lord this morning. God is God. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when you see the blood, when I see the blood, he says, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So may God bless this reading. You may be seated. I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning reverently, Lord. How we love you and respect you and thank you for your presence being with us. Lord, we just pray that you'll quicken your word to our hearts, not to our heads. May it go deep into our hearts, Lord, that we'll understand and perceive what the Spirit would say to us, every person here, and those joining with us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, I want to speak about uh, the token. The token on display. We'll find out what the token is in a minute. The token on display. And to me, it's a very simple message, but it holds a wonderful truth. And I want to also read from Exodus chapter 12, verse 21. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill, it, kill the Passover. And, it shall take, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it into the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts. So I just want to show you, just so you know what we're talking about. This is the lintel. So they had a hyssop with blood on it out of the bowl that they killed the lamb in the house. They put the blood up here, the lintel, and the two side posts down here and down here. That's what they did, just so you know. That was life or death. Seriously, it would be a terrible thing if they didn't do that. The death angel going to that house will take the firstborn. So brother and sister, it was really important they got that right, and it's really important we get it right. Because nothing's changed. I pray that God will speak to our hearts. Very important that we get it right. And it goes on to say, You should strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. In other words, you have to stay behind the blood. Don't go cruising out into the world. Stay behind the blood. The blood represents the blood of Jesus Christ. It was just a lamb there, but it represents the lamb of God, as we will see. And the Lord will pass through the, to smite the Egyptians... When he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over your door. Who wants him to pass over your door? I want him to pass over my door. I want him to see the blood. If he doesn't see the blood, we perish. That's the word of God. That's not my opinion. That's God's word. And I will not suffer the destroyer to come unto your houses to smite you. I also want to read from Joshua, because this is another type, wonderful thing. 
Joshua chapter 2, verse 17. And the men said unto her, This is in Rahab's house before Jericho. And the walls came down. And the two spies said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line, a rope, of scarlet thread. It was red like blood. In the window which thou lettest us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's house home unto thee. God wants all your family to be saved. Amen. He wants every member to be under the blood. And brothers and sisters, you, we, want to, we need to believe for every member. Brother Lee, all those relations back there, they're mine too. Amen. Even if you didn't know them, because of the times gone by, we want each one of them to be saved and blood of Jesus. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street... See, the Bible says oh, back in Egypt to stay inside the house when the blood, don't go outside, stay until morning, stay under the blood, don't go drifting out. And he said uh, with, with Rahab and, the, and the, the, the scarlet thread was down on the wall, they could see it real bright red. And he, the people had to stay in there. And if they, if they went out, the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be on his head. And we will be guiltless, the two brothers said. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. Very clear. When God gives instructions, it really pays to obey. When God tells us what to do, it's really worth listening to it. So I just pray that each one of us will appreciate what's happening here. Now, God has always provided a way for his children. And also back then and also today. The, the red blood is a token. As we just read here, it's a token. God promised to pass over that house that had the red blood or the red line rope on the wall of, of Rahab's house, because Israel was going to come in and they're going to sack the city. They killed everybody except those in that house. I tell you what, judgment's coming upon this world, seriously. You know it, I know it. The world knows it. America knows it, big time. The judgment is coming. We need to be under the blood of Jesus Christ, not under the government. You can't do that. You can't hide behind something. There's only one thing you can hide behind is the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we see the red blood was a token, the promise to pass over the house. Rahab had the red scarlet thread, as I said, on the wall, a token also outside, and God passed over that house. Both Israel and Rahab had to display the red token on the outside of their house. Now we come up to date, 2020, the 20,000, yeah, 2020. <laughs> Never thought I'd get here, but here we are. In our day, God requires every believer to display the token on their house. I'm not talking about your wooden house or your brick house at home. I'm not talking about that house. I'm talking about this house that we live in. This is a house, this is a tabernacle of God. Do you believe me? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 6.19 which says, And it shall be, uh, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. So this temple's got to be kept clean. If the Holy God's going to dwell in it, it must be kept clean. Which ye have of God, and you are not your own. You don't even own you. <laughs> 
We are owned by God, and God's given you a next breath because of His mercy and grace, and He wants to live in you, and He wants to use you, and He wants to bless you, and He wants your house to be kept clean. Who believes that? Say amen. amen. Very important. Hallelujah. So it's, it, it's the displaying of the token each time was before judgment and deliverance. And I just want to say this to you folks here and afar, that the world is facing divine judgment. It's very clear in the scripture, you go to about any church will tell you that, anyone with any spirit about them will tell you that we're facing judgment days. Because the world has rejected God and mocked God. We can't mock God. We've got to believe in God and respect His Word. Because God is His Word. This is God in print. This Bible is God in print. And what He says in here we should be doing. So what does a token mean? I want to speak about that a moment. We want to know what the token means. A token indicates... That something has been paid for. Now we all know this. It's like a receipt. Now they don't do it too much today because it's all electronic. But You know, you should, used to go down and you'd buy a, a bike or a car or something and they would write a receipt for you, uh, $2,000. They write the receipt, they give you the receipt that receipt or that token is an evidence that the price has been paid. And if somebody challenges you, you can show them the receipt. I paid for it. Here's the receipt. Here's the token. So that's what a token does. We used to have milk bottle tokens. Who remembers the milk bottle tokens? <laughs> I tell you, what a time we had with those. The reason they used tokens, we used to put... We used to put money in the milk bottle and young fellas used to come around and milk them. <laughs> Did you milk them, brother? <laughs> uh, they used to take the money out, you see. And then they switched to tokens, which was an evidence that you have paid for the milk. You put it in there, the milkman came and took the tokens, you cashed them in. So that's what a token is. A token is an evidence that the price has been paid. Now the token is something God is looking for. He said, when I see the blood, which is the token of God, he said, it's a token. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now I want you to note something here. It's the very life. The blood was the very life of the sacrifice, the lamb inside the house that just killed it and roasted with fire. And the blood was an evidence that the life had been given. And God said, oh, these people, they are believers. Look, they've got the blood on the doorposts and lintels. They believe my word, they've killed the lamb, and I'm going to pass over them. I'm not going to strike that house with death. The death angel. When they saw that, now we know the lamb represents Jesus Christ and he has been slain. He gave your, his life for you that you may live and have eternal life. And he's looking for the token as an evidence that you have accepted the blood of Jesus Christ for the covering of your sins. And that token today is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, sir. That's exactly what he'll be looking for. He's looking for it. So this is a very important message because we'll see how people bypass it, circumvent the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is a dangerous thing to do. And we'll see why very clearly from the Scriptures. It represents, the baptism of the Holy Ghost represents that you have accepted 
the blood of Jesus Christ for the covering of your sins. You must receive it. And when you believe it, God will give you the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's not just, oh, I feel good today. No, no, it's, it's greater than that. It's a token. It's a sign that God has accepted your faith in what he did at Calvary. So this is really important. That's exactly what happened in the day of Pentecost. When the gospel was preached there. And Paul, Paul, Peter got up and preached, repent every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for a remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the process. Repentance, baptism and the, and the token, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Very clear everywhere in the Bible. We'll see it. And so we see... It, it, it represented something. It wasn't just God saying, oh, I think it'd be nice to have you have a little blood on your doorpost. It's, it's, it's a sign that they believe what God said to do. And it's a perfect type of Jesus Christ shedding his blood for you. Now we get into really, it really comes down to something shortly. You'll see. It contains the spirit of God. The blood... The blood represents the life that was in the sacrifice. Today, we don't have the blood of Christ, physical, the chemistry of the blood, but we do have the life that was in that blood, Amen. the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that is a sign that you believe that your sacrifice was given for you. Amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah! Isn't this wonderful? Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, sister. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You believe that, don't you? Amen. You're both nodding your head. It applies to both of you. <laughs> you see, it's really important to receive that. Very, very important. So we see... <clears throat> Today, it's the, it's the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lamb, the Lamb of God. Just want to read you a real good quote here. Therefore, the blood stood for a token that the life had been given. But in this glorious place under the covenant, it's talking about the New Testament covenant, there is a difference between the blood and the life. The token for the believer today is the Holy Ghost. That's your token. Absolutely. Not the blood, not the chemistry. We don't have that anymore. To see. But it's the Holy Spirit of God. That is the token that God requires for the church today. God must see the token. He must see it in every one of us. So what does the token show to God? You know, when we travel, we buy a ticket. And you get a token, a little ticket like this. They print it out. And that is an evidence that your fare on the bus or on the plane or whatever it is has been paid for. The token in your hand is an evidence that the price of your travel is paid. Now, when it comes to leave, you must present the token. I've seen, I've travelled lots of times. And when you present the token, when you go up to the counter or up to the, through, up to the gate, say on an aeroplane, and you're going to go through, you can go up there and you can be holding, have cameras around your neck, you can have a floral shirt on. You might be going to the islands or something. So I'm a tourist. Come up, up the lady. Yes, sir. Lovely day today. It's a nice day for flying. Yes, yes. And you're so excited. And she's the next thing she says. You can be really, make out you're a, a real wonderful traveler. You've got your little bag and all. And when you get up to her, she says, can I have your token? Can I have your ticket? Oh, she's, 
He said, no, no, no. No, he said, no, I travel a lot and they know I've paid. They know I have paid. Listen to this. They know I've paid and I'm going on this aeroplane. I've been on it many times. She said, that's nice. Ticket, please. You can come up to God and you can say, I'm a good Christian. I know what it is to be a Christian. I can act like a Christian. I can do this and I can do that. And I'm a, a gifted person. I can preach. I can sing. And you come up to the gate and God says, could I have the ticket, please? I want the token. Where is the Holy Ghost in your life? Where is it displayed that I can see? And the judgment of God doesn't come on you because you are a believer in the finished work of Calvary. And I have put my seal. My sign is on there, the seal of God, which is the Holy Ghost. The token of God has been placed on your life and it's there for all to see. Hallelujah. Who loves the Lord? The God has made it so clear and so simple for every believer. To the ticket displayed it was the only thing recognized. You know, you could be an executive, you could have a whole entourage following behind you at the airport, and you can come up, and that means nothing. The dear little girl says, Could I have your ticket, sir? Ticket, please. But look, can't you see I'm a businessman? I own this company. She said, That's nice. Could I have the ticket? You can act like a Christian. You can talk about God. You can go through all the... Pro- I go to church every Sunday. Nice, but where is the token? When God comes, there's only one thing he'll recognize is the blood. Amen. The Holy Ghost upon your life. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Who loves the Lord? Amen. So we just pray that God will help us all. People say, I believe Jesus shed his blood. Just like in Egypt, they could have shed the blood of the lamb in the house and put it in the bowl, as God said to do, and didn't put the blood on the doorpost and lintel. Their firstborn would have died. That is serious. You could go, I, 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 I accept the Lord, I believe he, that's good, but has he sent back the Holy Ghost to you as a sign that your faith has been received by God that you believe in the shed blood of the Lamb. There's many people say, I believe in Jesus. There's many people in Gisborne say, I believe in Jesus. I believe God's coming. That they have all these confessions. But is the token applied to their house? Has it been displayed for God to see that they are filled with the Holy Spirit? I really believe that with all my heart. They could say, I believe the word of Moses. Oh, here's a great prophet. I believe in Moses. I believe what he said. But when the angel came to the door, where's the blood? Where's the blood? That's all he's interested in. That was the commandment of God. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I can see two angels coming down, walking together, board. This house here, for other angels, there's blood on the door. Okay, let's move on. They come to the next house. How's it there? There's blood on the door. Good. He ticks it off. Comes to the next house. He says, I don't see any blood on this door. No blood on the door? The people on the inside said, we believe in Moses. We believe the word of the Lord. We've killed the lamb. He says, where's the blood? Where's the Holy Spirit in your life? He said, take the life. Next house. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when God comes in this last day, he's not going to come on your confession, what church you go to, what you believe, and all those things. Very nice. They may be all true. But he's looking for the Holy Spirit in you. That's your resurrection power. That's what's going to take you off the ground, is that quickening power of God's Spirit living in you. You can come to church until the cows come home. That's great. But you must have the Holy Ghost. You must have the token displayed upon your house, which we saw before is your body, is the house, the temple of the Holy Spirit. People say, I believe the word. I've got a revelation of the word. That's very good, but where's the token? 
You know what Paul said? Apostle Paul, this is what he said in Acts 19 too. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We, do, we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Paul wanted to know, you believe, that's good, but have you got the Holy Ghost since you believe? A lot of people confess, I love the Lord, I believe in God, I believe He's coming soon. That's very good, but God's interested in one thing. The token. The Holy Ghost in your, in your life. When we come up to the door, open the gate. Paul the Apostle or whoever was up there, the angel said, have you got the token? Have you got the Holy Ghost on your life as a, a evidence that you are a believer in the shed blood of Jesus Christ? Has he filled your life? All our confessions don't mean anything. Paul says, have you received this Holy Ghost since you believed? You can believe, but have you received it? If you really believe it, God will give it to you. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? If you've already repented of your sins and you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, as it says in Acts 2, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that is so important. Brother and sister, I want to I go out of this world and, and I, I want to ha have a testimony that he told the truth. I'm not here to please people or please myself. I just want to say what God's word says. You must receive the token. You must receive the Holy Ghost, which is the life of your sacrifice. Let's turn to Ephesians 1.12. It says there that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and who, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now that seal is another word for the token. The seal holds you in there. When you're sealed with the Holy Ghost, you cannot be lost. You know, when you go down to railway carriages, I used to go to the railway station lots to get stuff. I used to go onto the, onto the carriages and get stock and that sort of thing. And what they used to do is seal the carriage. When the carriage came into Gisborne, they didn't have it anymore, what a shame. But when the carriages came into Gisborne, they were sealed. They had a seal on them. And when, the, when they packed the, the, tra the train in Auckland or wherever it was, Wellington or wherever, they put a seal on the door and that seal was a seal and a sign that everything was in order and the luggage was not going to fall over in transit. And it was sealed unto its destination. And we are sealed unto our destination. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you are sealed unto your eternal destination the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll take you all the way to glory. It'll hold you in place. You want to say, I'm a Christian today, tomorrow I'm not so good. No, brother and sister, when you seal the Holy Ghost, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Yes. So that's why that token, that seal is so important to you. You can go to church and that's great. God can give you, endow you with gifts and you can be a great person and everything. That's wonderful, but that's not what I'm talking about. They had to have the seal. We see this here in Ephesians. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first, first trusted in Christ, in whom after also we trusted. After we heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed, there's something else to happen when you believe. After you believe, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. That's why I believe in a Holy Ghost gospel. That's why I believe it's so important, not just to be a church member, not just to come and sing and shout and speak in tongues. Those things are very nice and very wonderful and very true. But you need to be sealed with the Holy Ghost. 
He says here, Paul speaking, verse 13, just go back to verse 13, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, you went to church, you heard the message, oh, that's good, I believe it, in whom after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. God puts a seal on your house. When he puts a seal on your door, you're saved unto the day of redemption. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Let's say praise the Lord. Which is the earnest, goes on, which is the earnest of our inheritance. The earnest is the guarantee, the down payment unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. We are the purchased possession. This body, the last part of our redemption is this body. This body will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and this corruptible flesh will put on a glorified body and will be changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye. Who believes this? It's what the Bible says, it's full of it. You'll be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye and be raptured up to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. I believe this with all my heart because God said it and he cannot fail. His word is true. And so we see these things are, are very, very important. The having the blood on the doorpost and lintel of your house. This is your house, remember. Not talking about the bricks and the mortar. We're talking about your house, this house here. It's got to have a mark on it. God puts a mark on his people. God can see that mark when I see the blood. I'll pass over you. When he sees the Holy Ghost, he'll receive you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We go to all sorts of churches. And I believe this and I believe that. That's sweet. But God is looking for the ticket, please. I want the ticket. And you know you can be an old person. You can be an old, poor, ragged sort of a person. You've got no money and you don't have much. You come down to the gate, you might be hobbling along. When you get there, you might have a beer. You might not look very much. God says, you got a ticket? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes, my Lord. Enter thou under the joys of thy Lord. You may see somebody come down, all dressed up, looks like a, a prince, and really nice, a Bible under their arm. And they get to the gate. And the Lord will say, ticket please. He said, I'm a good preacher. I've got 30,000 in my church. Ticket please. Oh, I don't have a ticket. He said, he turns them away from the gate. God doesn't, is no respecter of persons. You don't, whether you're rich or poor. You have status or no status, whether you have a name or no name, means nothing to God. There's only one that has a name, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the one that we praise and honour and give thanks to. So it's really important to have the ticket, the token, the messages having the token of God. So we can have all sorts of professions, and that's good. We can be a great preacher. That's good. He's looking for one thing. The token on display on our house. You know, they, you could imagine what happened in Egypt that night. When they went to the house and there was no blood on the doorpost and lintel. Even though they may have sacrificed the lamb. You know, I've heard it demonstrated very in a graphic form. They started to hear the screams of Egypt. People screaming out. Terrible death had struck the home because there's no blood on the doorpost. And the young boy inside the house of the believers, he was the firstborn. He said, Dad, have you checked to make sure the blood's on the door? Have you made sure that it can be seen, the blood on the doorpost and lintels of our home. He said, yes, son, I have made sure it is. 
Ten minutes later, Dad, are you sure? The blood has been put on the doorpost. Are you absolutely certain, Dad? Yes, my boy. It's on. You would be shouting too if you knew it would be your death if it wasn't. And this morning, you're going to ask God, is the blood on my house, Lord? I want it to be there. If it's not on your house, it can be. If you really want God, you can receive him. He will give you the Holy Ghost if you're really sincere about it. You have repented of your sins. You have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He promised to give you the Holy Ghost. Oh, it was a very sobering thing. Everyone could see it too. This is what I want to bring out. Everyone could see the token. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, everybody's going to know about it. That guy's different. They will, Peter. They'll know there's a difference. They know there's a difference. They may not be able to explain it, but they know there's a difference. They can see it. The Egyptian soldier walking past the door, he could see the blood on the doorpost. He could see the life of the lamb on the doorpost and lintels. It was clear for all to see. And when the, when the Holy Ghost has come to you and it's in your life, people will know it. You're a, you're a mark. You've got a mark on you. The mark of God, the seal of God can be seen by everybody. Isn't that wonderful? You can't display it. It's not about you trying to be good or you trying to be spiritual. No, no. If he's put the mark on you, it can be seen by the outside. It's a public declaration that you are a believer in the blood of Jesus Christ. And God's put that mark on you as a true believer. Not a churchgoer, a true believer. It's not just a Sunday morning thing either. Some people come to church on Sunday morning. They're very spiritual on Sunday. They love God. They get up and they testify on Sunday. On Monday, they serve the devil. Now, that's the truth. And they serve all the week, serving the devil. Then on Sunday, they become spiritual again. They want God. The God has wonderful vision. He can look straight through you like a crystal glass. God doesn't look upon a man as man sees men on outward appearances. He looks onto the heart. He's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. I want him to see me. I want to be an open book to the Lord. Who wants to be an open book to God? You want him to see everything about you. I don't want to hide anything and get to the door. And he says, can I have your token, please? You've got to have it. If you don't have the token, you're not going in. Just like it was in Israel. Just like it was Rahab putting that scarlet thread down the wall. They knew that if it got behind that, that token, they were safe. They had to stay in behind the token, stay behind the blood of Christ, stay behind the Holy Spirit and filling. So we're going to be marked by the Lord. If we're not marked by the Lord in the end, we'll be marked by the devil. I want to be marked by God, the seal of God. I don't want the mark of the beast. I want to be, have the seal of God on me. Just want to read you this quote here too. We've gone off without the old time prayer meetings and the baptism of the Holy Ghost coming back until the fire has burnt low. You can cry out, you can try to get people to the altar and they just walk up like they're almost dead. A dread to come. Then ask ministers to come and pray with them. Oh, why did he ask me for? They go down there, you can hardly get them. They'll stand there just for a few minutes, look up at you, go back and sit down on this seat. To me, the fire's gone out. Brothers and sisters, we need to realize the fire has gone out and getting very low. 
You need a reinfilling of the Holy Ghost. You need to get down to the altar in your room or at your house or at the altar here, wherever it is, and ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. It's a powerful experience that cannot be compared with anything in this world. Amen. You won't want the world after it either. The world will leave you cold. He's our satisfying portion. Praise be to God. We must, what must we do to receive the token? Israel had asked the same question. When Peter came down, I've been in that upper room in Israel. It's quite a big room actually. It's probably almost as big as this church, the upper room. They've still got it there. And remember, it took 120 people, so it was, a, it was made, it's all blocks. Made out of stone, but it was about this size. When Peter came down, and the saints with him, they're still staggering under the power of the Holy Spirit. They walked and acted like drunk men. They were so filled. Let me say this. When you receive the Holy Ghost, it's not love some little fluttery feeling, a little warm, I think, about, I think I saw a light. Listen, when the Holy Ghost comes into you, you are changed. You are a new person. You're not like you used to be. You have a hunger and a thirst for God. You're thirsting. If you haven't got it, God's got it for you. And he's calling you this morning. Then you should take a real opportunity to receive it because you may not be here tomorrow. None of you know when you leave. See how many people dying on our roads in New Zealand alone. Terrible. We've got to be ready. Jesus said, be ye therefore ready for an hour when you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Peter came down and he started to preach, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember that saw the pillar of fire over each person? We've got photographs of that now. I've taken the pillar of fire by camera, proves to people who want to know, but we believe it anyway, that God is still alive. He said, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, I pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? We know that we've crucified the Lord of glory because we rejected his word and we're walking against his Bible. And Peter said, and to the rest of the apostles, and, and, it's, and, and Peter said unto them, Repent, true repentance, asking God to forgive you of your sins. A real repentance, not just a, you know, a dry-eyed one. I got my salvation card. It's more than that. A real brokenness, Lord, I ask for your, for your forgiveness. And be baptised, every one of you, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is the token. That is what you need to go on the rapture. You've got to have it. For the promise, it's a promise is unto you and to your children and all that are afar off, even New Zealand, and we are the furthest place away from uh, Jerusalem in the world, right here in Gisborne. Just thought you'd want to know that. Even to those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves. How can you save yourself? By receiving what Jesus Christ has done for you. You say, do I have to go to church? Nothing to do with going to church. Do I have to be good to my neighbour? Nothing to do with being good to your neighbour. Although that's really good. All those things are good. I think you should come to church. The church helps you to get closer to God. But the only thing you can do is to receive what God has done for you. There's nothing else you can do. Say, Lord, I believe when you died at Calvary over 2,000 years ago, your blood ran down, the whole seven leaders ran down to that ground. You took my sin right there. 
You are judged for my sin. And I repent of my ways. And I ask you to forgive me, Lord. And I ask for the blood of Jesus to forgive every sin of my life from the day I was born until the day you come and take me home. And when God sees you believe it, and you go into those waters, and you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus according to his word, then the Bible says he promised to give you the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the token of God. That's your ticket. That's your token to get in the door. Without it, you can be a preacher, you can be a head of a great denomination, you can be used of God in a wonderful way, but you must have the Holy Ghost, the token of God, upon the doorpost and lintel of your house. And he said, For the promises unto you and to your children, those that are far off, even as many as our Lord God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves. Save yourself, brother and sister, from this untoward generation. You people listening on the internet, save yourself. Well, how do you save yourself? By relying on the Lord Jesus Christ and coming and repenting of your sins and asking him to forgive you. Have you been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you been baptized? And when you signifying that you're buried with Christ and you rise in newness of life and he fills you with the Holy Ghost. I've had that experience. It's wonderful. And you can have it too. No man-made views, understanding, and associations can replace this experience. It's just so true. Now the blood was shed at Calvary, bathed down upon the ground. He says here, we have the token of the blood we were talking about a while ago, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost to identify us as believers. You don't come say, I belong to this church. I believe this sort of thing. That may be very nice, but the only thing God sees is the blood. He only sees the token, and the token is the Holy Spirit. That's your pass into the kingdom. That's what Paul said, Peter said, and Paul said, of course. Very clear. May God help us all. It's the seal of God. It's God's own seal. God's own recognition of you as a true believer. Not because you come to our church. No. They'll never get you there. Not because you go to this other church. They won't get you there. It's whether you have the Holy Ghost. That's all that matters. And that's what I'm here to say today. You must be filled with the Spirit of God and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Today, the very life of Jesus Christ must now be in us. For him to pass over us with a blessing, not a cursing, a blessing. We must be born of the Spirit. There's too many stillborn babies. Stillborn. You ever seen a stillborn baby? You don't want to see one. A stillborn baby goes through the process of being born in every way. You know, with a woman, blood and water and all that stuff. And when it comes out, the doctor checks the baby, looks at the fingers, looks at the toes, checks the ears, checks the head, everything. Everything's perfect. Except something's missing. No life. The baby doesn't squawk. It's dead. Goes through the process of being born again, but never received the life. You can go through the process of being a Christian, but have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That's the very life of Jesus Christ coming and living in you. And that's all he will recognise. He said he would only recognise that. So may the Lord help us. We want a full birth consisting of water, blood and spirit, justification, sanctification and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It takes you out of the world. You know, they stayed behind the blood with Rahab as well. They weren't to come out of the Egyptian house with the blood on the door. They had to stay behind. You get out of there, you're in trouble. You stay in behind with God. There's such a need in the world today for the token the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Too many give up. 
Wait on the Lord until you receive it. Jesus said, wait until you be endued with power from on high. When he we told them to go up to, to Jerusalem, they had to wait until they were endued with power. I just want to read you this quote. It's very good. Seeking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, many times I run into people and say, well, I have sought for the Holy Ghost and I just couldn't receive it. I believe it's for me. I don't believe it's for me. Every time I get down, I get sick. I go to praying. If I fast, I get sick. If I try to stay all night or stay up, I get so sleepy. I can't get off my feet. <coughs> he says, remember, that is the devil. He's trying to hinder you. Because God intends for you to have the Holy Spirit, it's for whosoever will. Who wants the Holy Ghost? Raise your hands. You really want it. Mean it from your heart. Lord, I want to be filled with your Spirit. The Bible says those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Hallelujah. You just receive it. Say, Lord, I'm going to receive it. I'm ready. I'm repentant of my ways. I'm getting rid of the world out of my life. I'm getting serious with you because I want to say this. The time is running out. The coming of the Lord is at the door. You're not going to have time to wait on God much longer. This is the end time. I want to close with this scripture here. John 7, 37. The last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, Jesus cried, saying, If any man thirst, Thirsty! You get a thirsty person. Do you have a drink of water? No. Oh, that's okay. No! Give me that water! I want that water. Please give me that water. Reminds me. <laughs> when you want water, you, you want it. Give me that water. If you want the Holy Ghost, you'll seek it and thirst for it. Until you get it. Jesus didn't go up say, stood up in, in, in the temple and said, No. If any man thirst here. The Bible says he cried. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow, flow rivers of living water. When I first received the Holy Ghost, I remember it coming from here. It just came from here, came right up. And I was just a kid, only a teenager. And I started to really cry to God, speak in unknown tongues. I'd never been taught how to speak in tongues. I was a Baptist kid. And I just started to really speak out and praise God. And I have ever since, because he gave me the Holy Ghost. But you've got to thirst for it. We don't want to thirst for churchianity. We don't want to thirst for something false or something put on or counterfeit. We want to actually get the real thing. Who wants the real thing? Amen. The skies are full of the real thing. If you want it, you can receive it. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive the Holy Ghost, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you're thirsting, you're going to get to that water. You're not going to be put off. Oh, it's too far to walk. I've got another 20 feet. If you're thirsty, you'll walk the 20 feet. You want to get it. I believe God is coming soon and those who are displaying the token will be taken. Jesus said, one will be taken and the other left. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Brothers and sisters, there's going to be people left behind. Make sure it's not you. You get that token on your life, on your doorposts and lintels of your house. Be filled with the Spirit. You're going. You've got the seal. 
sealed under the day of redemption. Isn't that wonderful to say praise the Lord? And it's not hard to get. Jesus paid the price for you. You can't say, oh, Jesus wouldn't accept me. He said he would accept you. The Bible says Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He died for the sins of the whole world, but you must receive it. Gifts must be received. Now, brothers and sisters, pray that God will give you that token. You may get it in bed. My mother received the token about one o'clock in the morning. Now, she had, and I'm closing, she had desired the Holy Ghost for a long time. I used to trot off to all the meetings, all the evangelists that came to town, tent meetings and all. I was hungry for God too. Didn't even realise it, but God was calling me too. And my mother and father were seeking for the Holy Ghost. One day, one day she was in bed. One o'clock in the morning, sound asleep. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God came on her. She sat up straight, arms up, praising God and spoke in unknown tongues. She was a lovely Baptist lady. She wasn't taught, now this is how you speak in tongues, blah, 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 all that nonsense. When you fill the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God speaks through you. Nothing to do with you. Bypasses the brain, goes straight to the soul. Is that right, brother? It's, it's real. It's wonderful. Who wants that experience? And it's for to whomsoever will, let him come. And God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shall we just stand for prayer? Got a song there, Sister June. Send the fire, send the fire. Or whatever's on your heart. Every head bowed as we come to the Lord. God's in the room. God's here in this building. And he knows what you're thinking. He knows exactly what you're thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. So let us just humble before him and ask him to come and help us here today. Maybe just the organ, brother Peter, just for now. But when the song comes, we can use the piano. This is every head bowed. Just realize that God is here. Lord Jesus, we come to thee in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord, we just want this, this infilling of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we saw people throughout the ages, even in, in ages gone by, 50 years ago. Lord, I saw people really in the spirit, real humility, sweetness and power. Lord, I just pray that you'll give us another opportunity here, even today, Lord, and those who are listening overseas or wherever country they're in, Lord, that you would come to them too. Lord, we want this token. We must get the token, Lord, that you will receive and come into our house and take us to be with you. I pray, Lord, we'll not miss the hour of our opportunity, but there be something in us calling out for it, craving for it, thirsting for it. May you fill us, Lord. I'm asking this in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus for your glory. Bless each person here, Lord. I commit them to thee. And all those that are listening, I commit them to you too, Lord, that you'll hear their prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So as we sing the song, are you looking for the fullness? I don't want just some a little anointing, a little blessing. I want the fullness of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. If you're desiring that, you really would like that, I believe God will give it to you. And if anybody would like prayer this morning, because you feel it on your heart, you want that experience. You want to come down to this altar, we're willing to pray for you. That God will fill you and give you what you're looking for. Change your life, tip you upside down. You know, when I received the Holy Ghost as a kid, I was only 14. When I received the Holy Ghost, my life was transformed over anew. I had no desire for the things of the world. It left me cold. 
because I had a Holy Ghost now. When you get the Holy Ghost, it's a Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, it'll change your life. Let's just sing the song. Are you looking for the fullness of the blessings of the Lord in your heart and life today? Claim the promise of your Father come according to His word in the blessing of my way. He will bring your heart today to overflow. Bring as the Lord Let the Lord do the work that you may well be feeling in your heart. That's the still small voice of the Lord stirring you. Shall we sing that whole hymn again? And feel free to come. Just come to the Lord, not to us, to the Lord. Are you looking for the fullness of the blessing of the Lord in your heart and life today? The promise of the Father and the Lord He gives us all the grace to restore.
sister, don't just give up here. You go home, the Holy Spirit speaks to you in bed. Get on your knees and ask God to come and fill you. It's really essential that you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Very essential. You can know a lot of things, but you need the token. You need the seal of God to be on your life. God bless you all. Thank you, Brother Lee. <clears throat> 208, don't lose your vision of Jesus. That's exactly what you may well be feeling. And you folks here around the world could be the same. Okay. Don't lose your vision of Jesus. Don't lose your vision of Jesus. us and to be with us at the lunch and um, have fellowship over there remember to do all our talking over there any talking in here is purely for the Lord Jesus Christ we thank you for respecting that we also have a Tuesday night prayer meeting which is on this coming Tuesday 7 o'clock and all are welcome we just thank the Lord for the meal uh, here so we don't have a prayer service uh, pray over there. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for being here, undertaking for us, Lord. We know that you're real and we know that you're in our heart. We can feel your presence. We know it's the truth. You confirm it to us. It's not to the church people generally. It's to me, whoever me is, personally. Undertake for them, Lord, wherever the folks are that listen and bless them. Just bless our food that we're about to partake, Lord, and the fellowship that we'll interact with one another. Help us, Lord, to continue with you in our walk of life until you come. Amen. May the Lord bless you.